but welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie, I'm a full-time sketchbook artist, and today I'm going to be trying some new art supplies that I've never tried before. So some of these have come from the auction art supply I filmed recently, I'll link that up in the cards, and another one is second-hand, so I'm really excited to test them out. We've got some different types of pencils, so we've got the normal ones, pastel ones, watercolour ones, and then I've also got some watercolour sticks, so they're Albrecht Dura Aquarelle sticks, which I'm excited to give a go. And we're going to create a sketchbook spread using these new to me materials. So we're going to start by showing you what I'm going to be using today. You might not be able to get these anymore because like I said I did get them from auction and second hand so that does mean a lot of the ranges are discontinued or maybe not made today or sometimes it might mean I have colours that you won't be able to get now because they're not in the ranges but I find it's a really fun way to try art supplies and give them a go as well as having unique stuff that maybe you haven't had before and I find it makes my work really playful when I test these out. So it does mean you might not be able to find exact matches, but the whole idea is just to encourage you to play with your supplies. You might have some of these hidden at the back of the drawer, you might have something similar, and maybe you're just being too intimidated to play with, so I hope this encourages you to create. So first up we've got the Rexel Derwent pencils. These are pastel pencils, I don't think they actually match the ones that are on the tin, but these are definitely pastel pencils. They look quite old fashioned, I think Derwin don't go by Rexel Derwin anymore. And there's a couple in here that aren't actually those, they are Carbothello, which are still pastel, but I haven't ever used pastel pencils before, so this is completely new for me. I'm intrigued to give them a go and see how refined I can get my pastel marks and then also test out blending and smudging. So quite a few in here, a really nice range of colours with lots of greens and blues. Then we've got these which I got second hand, these are also Derwent, these are the Signature Premium Colour Pencils. I've looked these up online and you definitely can't get these anymore, but when I had a look in there they do remind me of the Lightfast pencils. So they've got the wooden barrel and they've got the little colour at the end. Again, quite a big set because there are actually two layers in this box, so a really nice amount in here and they all look brand new and unused. I have absolutely no idea what this lead is like, I don't know if they're soft, if they're similar to some of the pencils I prefer using, or if they're totally different, so I'm excited to give those a go. And then in this tin behind me we've also got the Albrecht Dura watercolour pencils. So these are by Faber-Castell, I've had a go with these already, but they were from that auction art supply haul I mentioned, and I absolutely love them. I've only tried them dry so far, but I really enjoyed how soft and buttery they felt. So I'm looking forward to testing them out as well and adding some water on it and just seeing how they activate. And then last up is also Faber-Castell, again from the Albrecht Dura range, and these are Aquarelle sticks. Again, these aren't made anymore so they have been discontinued, but to me they feel like oil pastels, they look like oil pastels, but I wonder if they're similar to the Derwent Inktense range. So I'm not really sure what these are going to be like, so I'm excited to give them a go. As I said, I really get a lot of enjoyment from playing and testing out new supplies. So we're going to have a go with using all of these supplies in a spread in my sketchbook. I'm going to apply them individually and see how they feel, as well as merging them together, seeing how they layer, if they do work together at all. But I think this is a really fun way to use new supplies, or ones that you haven't used much of, and I hope you enjoy watching. So let's get on with the art. So I'm going to be working in my Royal Talons Art Creation sketchbook. I do plan on using quite a bit of water, so obviously these are water soluble and so are the Albrecht Dura pencils, but I want to see how it works in this sketchbook because this is what I would go for normally, and I'm really interested in building up the textures, so I'm, I'm going to start by actually putting some panels on my pages just because I feel like that's a nice way to work out how I'm going to split this page up. I've got a few references and I do really enjoy working in panels, it just feels a bit more manageable sometimes. And I do want to do more than one reference on this page, so I'm just going to be drawing on my panels. We've got some acrylic paint in this corner. This is a working sketchbook, so I'm just going to go over that and see how we go with the materials. So I'm going to split it into three, and I'm going to just fill these with landscapes and play around with the textures. So at the moment obviously that is water soluble so it might get mixed in when I add some water but we're going to see how we go. I'm not going to completely douse this with water, I do just want to play around so I've got my water jug and I've got a paintbrush and see how we go from there. So I'm going to start with this bigger panel and just start playing around with these Faber-Castell Aquarelle sticks. These are also Albert Dora, these are from that same range but for me they kind of remind me of 
ink tents. They do look like oil pastels, so it'll be interesting to see how they feel on the page. I've got 10 of them, so not a huge amount of colours, so I might have to mix them up. But let's start by applying them straight to the page just to see the texture. And again, I'm not sketching first, we're just going to play around and see how we go. Okay, so they feel, they feel like crayons. They're harder than oil pastels. They're not very soft at all, which is quite interesting. I'm just going to layer them on the page and then we can add some water on top. I'll also have a little play with applying them, dipping them into the water directly. Some of these I'm not sure what colour they are. It's a nice brown. They do go on really smoothly. They, they glide over the page, which is really nice. It really doesn't feel like there's any resistance there at all. And they're quite pigmented as well, which is nice. I want this to be a light green up here, so I'm just layering on the yellow on top. And this is a reference with the C in on the left. I don't really have a blue or the right tone blue, so we'll just use this and see how we go. And then I'll come in with some of my pastel pencils maybe on top and some of the signature pencils as well. I want more of a mountain up here, more of the hill. Ooh, what colour is this? This is olive green actually. I thought that was a brown. So let's add that down here. I want to really build up the textures. It's dark sepia. So that's a nice brown for up here. There is a little lighthouse up here as well. I'm going to ignore that for now because I want to be a little bit more refined with that. So I'll use coloured pencils. So there's our basic shapes. Obviously, as with the ink tents blocks, it's going to look really messy and not great until we start to add the water so I'm presuming that will be the same here. There's one colour I haven't used yet which is the Delft Blue. So that's more of an indigo blue I think. And then maybe I'll leave the sky and do that with pastel because that's a really nice softness. And let's add in a bit more colour down here. Okay so I've got a really soft size 10 brush here. This is much softer than the usual De La Rowney ones that I use, but I really want to apply the water now and try and get some texture. So let's see how these react. Really nice. There's a lot of pigment coming up there, which is really good to see. It's responding to the water really nicely, and it does get rid of those initial marks, so it softens them out quite a lot. So it kind of feels like I'm painting with watercolour on top now. Let's try and mix in some of these greens. So I've applied quite a lot of water here. I'm just going to clean my brush so the yellows don't get so dirty. I think it will be interesting to, oh that's nice, layer on some of the sticks on top of this as well. So that applies really nicely with the water. So let's just spread that out and we'll wet it the C too. So it does remind me of ink tense blocks. So these aren't available anymore, as I said in the intro. But it's always fun to test out older supplies. Although I won't be able to link them or anything for you. So I'm just applying this on top. This is where the paper of the Royal Talons might not hold them very well. But I'm already getting some blooming, which is really nice to see. So I'm just going to apply some of these over the top. Now, interestingly, it's not coming out as vibrant as I'd expect. Certainly not as, a, as vibrant as when I put the dough and ink tense blocks over the top. So that's really interesting to see. It doesn't, I think it works better when you apply the water over the top of it. Let's see if I can get some of this darker brown. So that one's a little bit better than the green was. So I feel like that's a good base. It is quite watery because I've added in quite a lot of water, but it was interesting to see how it reacted. I do think it works better. I'm just gonna see what happens when I dip the green into the water and then apply that on the page. Same. Okay, so it's kind of just putting the water down. So I would say it definitely works better as a base to then apply water on top of. So that's interesting and definitely something I can learn from. I'm not a fan of this really bright yellow. So I'm going to start coming in with some watercolour pencils on top. So I have a few more colours of these. And because these are water soluble, I can already feel it activating, which I couldn't feel as much with the sticks. So I can already feel these softening because the page is already wet. And I'm just going to start building up some of these textures. I really want this to be nice and vibrant and green down here. So 
I'm just going to start building up some scribble textures. So I haven't waited for this to dry, so that's why I'm coming in with my watercolour pencils instead of some of the pastel pencils or the signature pencils, just because I'm impatient and I want to get this on. But when this has dried, I think I'll come in with that and see how that works over the top and layers. But for now, I'm just building up my greens. Okay, so whilst that's drying, let's focus on the top of the image. So I do want to put in a little lighthouse that's on the top of this hill. So I'm just going to use the signature pencil here. But it feels quite waxy, actually. I'm not sure what these are made of. I'll have to look that up. The pigment payoff isn't huge. I'm having to press quite hard to get the colour down. Let's see, and put the white on. So it definitely feels like there's a lot of resistance, so compared to the sticks when I was placing those down, these feel like I have to press quite hard to be able to get, and you can kind of hear it, where it's kind of sticking to the page, which is interesting. I don't think I've got any pencils like this in my collection. They are always very, very soft compared to like my Luminance, so it's interesting having that resistance on the page. It definitely feels almost sticky. So before I layer those up, I do also want to test out the pastel pencil, so I'm going to put that on the sky. Pastel pencils aren't something that I've used before, so where the Derwent signature felt almost sticky and resistant to the page, these definitely apply... You know when you apply a pastel and it's kind of got that grating sound? It feels like that, um, but with these, it is like pastel, so they're very, very gritty almost, and you can smudge the pastel on the page with your finger. So I'm going to try and build up this sky and just apply quite a few different blues and a little bit of pink to try and build up the sky slowly. You can see there where the bits of pastel are kind of shaving off onto the page as I'm applying my pencil, so there's quite a lot of dust. But I can mix that in with my finger, and I think this will be one where I sort of build up the colours slowly. Definitely quite a lot of dust. So it is like using pastels, but obviously with pencil you've got a lot more control. And I really like that. I like being able to see and have that control of where I'm placing the colour compared to bigger pastels, especially when I'm trying to be a bit more careful with my application. So I'm going to build this up with a few different shades of blue and pink now. the contrast of the textures here where it's really soft in the sky and then a bit more harsher on land. So I'm going to continue working into this and start applying some of my drier mediums on top now that this has dried. I definitely find these harder to use than my usual pencils so I'm used to using my Luminance pencils and I've also got some Derwent drawing pencils and these definitely feel like there's a resistance. So I'm just going to start building these up and I've got plenty of colours here to build up that colour as well as texture. So I'm just going to build this up and then I think I'll also come in with some pastel pencils. So maybe I can bring this in and really get more of that contrast. So I do find that the Derwent signatures aren't layering as well. So where I've put down that signature pencil there's definitely resistance of this layering on top. It's almost as if the signature is like applying a wax, almost like a wax resist. I don't think it, it is as strong as that, but it's definitely like indenting my paper and creating this marks on top that makes it harder for everything else to go on top. So definitely different to the softness of pencils I'm very used to. But already I think this is working having this contrast coming in, so I think I'll build up this the rest of this image using the pastel pencils and the Derwent signature. 
where I've gone a bit off the edge there, I'm just going to see if I can come in with an eraser and clean that up. So that's the beauty of the pastel pencils. So it does erase it quite nicely. I do have quite dirty hands, which doesn't help, but you can see there it might not be showing up as well on the camera, but then I can come in with my pastel pencils and just fill it in like that. It is quite nice to be able to come in and use my finger to create some of that texture as well. It's something I've been doing a little bit more of over the past year where I come in with more with my hands to soften things out and just get a little bit more messy. Okay, so interestingly, I'm not sure if it was actually the Derwent Signature pencils that's not going over, but actually the Aquarelle sticks. So this is a pastel pencil and it's struggling to go over down here. I think it's actually the Aquarelle sticks that's made this sort of wax resist going over. So you can see this is a pastel pencil and it's really not liking going over where I've put down that yellow and softened it with the water. It's kind of indenting the paper and creating these marks. Now it's dry, I want to see if the Albrecht Drawer pencils will go over it. Yes, they will. So it doesn't like the pastel and it doesn't like the Derwent signature, but it's fine with a water soluble. So that's definitely something to think about if I'm using it as a base that I won't be able to come in with my other pencils. Let me test it with Illuminance. Obviously we're not using them in this video, but I do want to see if they go over it. Oh, they do. Okay, so it must mean something in the pastel pencils and the signature that uh, it struggles to go over the Aquarelle sticks. It must be the makeup of the pencil that something in there doesn't like. Because these are water soluble pencils I can still come in even with my brush to soften out some of the marks. But I'm just going to continue. I think because I want to build up the texture I'm just going to use the Faber-Castell because I'm really struggling to get the other ones to layer over to make marks. Okay, so for this next one I want to do a girl. So I'm going to use the Derwent Signature as my base and try and layer those up and see how they work just on their own and without the Aquarelle sticks underneath. So I'm just going to start with a taupe colour and just draw out his shape because I want him to fill most of this panel. So I am using a light colour but it, I can definitely feel that resistance on the page. Okay, I don't think this is going to be a very accurate girl but I do want to see how they work just on their own. There is quite a bit of white on this girl, so I'm going to start there and then build up the layers from light to dark. And that's mostly because I'm not sure how they'll layer on top of each other. There's definitely that resistance, so I don't think that they'll be able to layer, but I want to see how they blend. It's really interesting this because they're not soft at all. It's really completely different to what I'm used to. They're much, much harder. And so they're, instead of creating that really thick, like, buttery line, they're a lot more scratchier. So the result is very different to how I would usually work. But it's creating totally different textures. So you can see how, like, scribbly these are. They're not blending in together very well. It doesn't lay. You can kind of see there with that texture. So I think it was a mix of the Faber-Castell Aquarelle sticks and these that was stopping it on the other page. This one just doesn't feel like it blends together at all. Some of them are softer than others, that depends on the colour I'm using. And it is slowly starting to build up, but it's taking quite a lot of force. So I'm having to push quite hard on the page. And you can definitely see where the texture is laying over it. And I'm just, it's just not really going over. So I'm having to really press hard and you can hear where I'm pressing just that resistance on the page. But I'm going to continue the gull in this way and just try and build up some of this texture and his feathers. So it does work well for the bird, but I'm going to finish off his body now.
Okay, so I'm going to try and create more contrast by building up the background around him. Because he is such a light bird, he's not showing up very well, so I am going to just fill in the background using the Faber-Castell Albert drawer. So for these, I'm going to apply them dry, and then we'll come in with the water on top. I want the background to be kind of soft and out of focus, which is why I'm going to soften them with the water. Okay, so there's actually quite a lot of pigment that I've put on the page there from the watercolour pencils. So now I'm going to start at the lightest and really try and activate some of this pigment and then blend it out together to create this sort of bokeh effect in the background. So these reactivate with water really, really nicely. I've had a little play with them before today and I really like them. They feel really, really soft when they go down. So definitely similar to what I'm used to with the Luminance compared to the Durant Signature. And they also reactivate really nicely with water. So they're definitely really fantastic watercolour pencils. They're less intense than the Durant Ink Tents but I think they are a little bit more usable when they're dry. So the ink tents I only really like using when they're wet, when I dip them in water or activate it with water afterwards. Whereas I think the Albert drawer is a good all rounder for if you are taking them out in your pencil case and doing some plein air and just want to use it without water, but also work really well with it when you do want to add it on. So I definitely plan on using them in that way where I will use them dry and also add water if I want to. So I'll probably use my water push pens for when I'm out and about. But you can see here it's creating that really nice effect where I'm blending the colours in together without creating one big mush of colour. So I don't want it to, to create a really muddy effect. I just want it to be softer than it was with the pencil marks showing. So this really softens the edges of all those marks. just adds a bit of an interesting background to the girl. You could also apply these to like a piece of paper and then wet it and use that as your palette rather than applying directly to the page. But I do like the texture that it gives by having that down first and then coming in with the water rather than using them as like a paint. So there's our girl. What I might do is soften up these areas where I can see the lines so it looks a little bit odd just being behind his head. So I'm just going to take the cedar green and try and soften that out a little bit. So you can see they are activating really nicely still on the wet page. You can kind of see where I have outlined the girl, but I think that's okay. And you can definitely see the difference in the texture between the Derwent Signature and then the softness and the butteriness of the Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils. Okay, and then for this last panel, I'm going to do another landscape image again. So another reference for some water and some hills in the background. And for this one, I'm going to use the pastel pencils as my base layer. So really create a really soft background layer to then work on top of. I'm going to do what I did with the aquarelle sticks and just start scribbling them down on the page and using my finger to soften them and smudge them out. So I don't use pastels very often in my work, but I do like the textures that they give. It's just very different to what I'm used to. So you can already see where I've got quite a dirty hand and that's already rubbing off on the page. So I'm going to put a piece of paper on this side again to stop my hand from rubbing the other side even more and just try and build this up with some colours before I then soften it out. So I'm trying to use the lighter colours in the distance and then I'll darken up and use more contrasted colours for the ones that are closer. So I like the way that it looks already, just with some of these marks, but I will soften them um, at the end. But I do like how it looks just like this, but it wouldn't stay like this. When I close the sketchbook, it would smudge anyway. You can and probably will need to apply a fixative to this just to stop things from moving around and shifting. And for that, I use a Jackson spray fixative. That's what I use when I do use pastels. Um, and that works really well. I generally don't like using fixative in my work, but if I'm using this much uh, like pastels and this sort of really movable medium where you can see all of the dust coming up, then I do think it needs to be held down. Otherwise, I think it would just become one big mess on the page when I do close the sketchbook.
Okay, so for this one, instead of using my finger, I'm actually going to use a sponge tool. There's a little bit of colour still on here. But I'm going to use this to soften now instead of my finger. And it kind of does the same thing, but I've got a bit more precision because it's got that pointed tip. These, I've got two types of these, so I've got the soft ones and I've got this uh, sketch plan one. So the sketch plans ones were from Amazon and the other ones were from Jackson's. And the these ones were a lot cheaper and you get a lot more for your money. Um, and I find it works absolutely fine. So I'll definitely be buying these in the future because they're basically the same and a lot cheaper. So I'm just going to soften out this background as well. And it just gives me that precision for getting some of these angles on the mountains especially. Now I'm trying to stick to the sponges that I've got. So I've got this sort of green one and then I've got this neutral one which I'm going to use for the field down at the front here. And I still want some of this mark making so I might come back in with another pencil. But we'll see how we go. I'm going with the marks that I made rather than going horizontal. For the water I will go horizontal, but for these I'm going straight up and down. And then I'll turn it over. So I try and use one sponge, but because it's got two sides, I'll use it for the different colours. And so I'll go horizontal for the water here. And it's created a completely different vibe to the other panels because of the softness of these pastel pencils. So what I might do is come in with some other pencils on top just to try and keep it more in keeping with the rest of the spread. I think that's important for me when I do do my panel pages that they all look as sort of as one. They are different views but I want it to look like it's almost the same sort of day or the same area. So there's definitely like a ethereal vibe to this one. So if I compare it to this side Oh, it kind of goes because we do have the softness there, but I definitely want a little bit more contrast in the front here. Let's use the Derwent signature and see how it goes on top of the pastel. So that does layer nicely. I want this to be warmer at the front here. I didn't have any sort of ochre coloured pastel pencils, so this is working nicely. You can see as I'm using the pencil, it is bringing up more dust, so that's something to think about as well. If I didn't want that then I could fix it at this layer and then work on top with the coloured pencils but I'm just going to be careful it will still need fixing definitely even if you do go over the top of it because there's nothing here to stop it from smudging. So I'm just going to build this up. This feels much nicer going on top of the pastel than it was on top of just the paper and also on top of the Albrecht Jura. So this feels like a really nice match. I think that the pastels help. It's still got that resistance, but it's definitely less, I think, because it's got that barrier between the paper and it's something that's really soft. So I'm enjoying using this on top of the pastel pencils more than I was with anything else. It depends on the colour, I think, as well. So this one's not layering as well. This one's more purple and it's not showing up too much. I definitely have to press quite hard to be able to get more pigmentation from these pencils. I want a bit more contrast, so let's try this sepia oxide and see if I can create some of this contrast on the mountain back here. But this is nice with the darker colour. And I, yeah, it's definitely layering nicely over the top of the pastel. It, when I press lightly it still creates that sort of uh, hard texture which I don't want so I'm used to being able to my other pencils press quite softly to build up the colour whereas this one I think needs a little bit more work and it doesn't blend as well so I'm trying to mostly use these for the contrasting marks rather than softening up the clouds in the sky for example. But I think we're almost there with that. Maybe it needs a contrast in the foreground. So we'll use this red oxide. So there's our final spread. I'll put some close-ups on screen as well. Really interesting to use these different materials. They are very different to how I'm used to working. I'm very excited to use the Albrecht Dura watercolour pencils a bit more. I feel like those will be really handy for my plein air work and it's really nice to get that variation of textures and still have that pigmentation as well, both wet and dry. 
The aquarel sticks I think are great for building up texture but it's something I've learned about working on top because when it dries it does feel waxy. And then the pastel pencils, I had a lot of fun with those building up the softer textures so definitely something I'll reach for when I want something a bit more dreamlike and hazy and maybe use that as a base for the Derwent signature pencils because I didn't love the way those felt. They were very waxy for me on their own but they felt better with the pastel pencils. So definitely a very helpful spread for me. I don't love how it looks but I think for the experimentation it was definitely worth it and I learned a lot by using my materials in this way. So I always encourage and recommend playing and having fun with your supplies. So I definitely recommend doing something like this if you've got some new things, trying out how they layer together, using them in different ways as a base layer and then for details on top too but definitely a fun way to experiment and learn more about your supplies. So a big thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this one and enjoyed seeing my play and seeing how it came together. These YouTube videos wouldn't exist without the financial support of my Patreon community, so a huge shout out to them because they help me to continue creating here for free, and thank you to you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next Sunday in a new video. See you later!